What's up? My name is Kamal, and today I'm going to be installing rear subframe collars on my 2004 Nissan 350Z. So I got these from Z1 Motorsports, and this is all the pieces. Two for the uppers, and two for the lowers for the front and rear. And they come with these instructions, and uh, this is something I noticed with all of Z1's parts that you order, is they usually come with some pretty good instructions. So the point of um, installing these is just to stiffen the whole vehicle. You know, like the body or frame of the car is attached to the rear subframe with just rubber bushings. So for like race car applications, people will like completely remove the rear subframe, press out the rubber bushings and install completely solid rear subframe bushings. But if you're someone like me where you're just working in your garage, it's a lot to remove the whole rear subframe because, you know, we don't really have all the room and a press large enough to do that. So Z1 made these uh, really cool pieces, which will just slide in in between gaps in the rubber bushing to help stiffen up the factory OEM ones already in the car and give us a slightly more stiffer feel and uh, more direct connection, I guess, in a way from the body and frame of the car and the rear subframe. So it just feels more stiff on the road. So obviously the first thing to do is to get your vehicle on jack stands. I know we're just working in the rear, so you think like maybe you just jack up the rear, but uh, I decided to just jack up the whole vehicle on all four jack stands, just because my uh, thought behind it is, you know, the subframe has all this stuff connected to it. It's kind of heavy. If the car is angled forward, I don't want the subframe when I drop it to kind of shift forward and then I might have difficulty lining things up when I want to get it back up. So if you just have it on four jack stands and it's level, when we lower the rear subframe, it could, should come straight down. And then when we put the collars in, then we should be able to put it right back up. So for, for example, this is one of the connections here and on this side as well. So we're going to have to remove some stuff. The first thing is actually going to be this uh, rear part of the exhaust. As you can see, mine's actually cut so I don't have as much. If you have your factory exhaust or aftermarket, you'll have some connections in the rear. But really, the only thing for me is just this one spot here and this uh, section right here. And um, yeah, mine are pretty rusted. I'll probably spray them with some WD-40 really quick to try and help break them loose a little easier. So I got this section of the exhaust off. Your muffler would be attached back here if yours is complete. So underneath, one of the nuts came off, but the other one, as you can see, broken half. And uh, I was kind of half expecting that to happen. This exhaust hasn't been off in a long time. I've never removed it, actually, because I always kind of worried that that would happen. Uh, if I had sprayed those uh, nuts like the night before, let WD-40 or PB Blaster, if you have that, just kind of soak and sit overnight, that might have not happened because the one side did come off all right. But I didn't do that and uh, didn't feel like waiting Forever, I waited for like 15 minutes, but uh, obviously it still wasn't enough. And here's what it looks like in the car. So uh, it's okay with me because uh, I kind of wanted to get a different Y pipe and exhaust for this car anyway. So I showed, showed you guys this the spot in the back of the rear subframe where um, some of the collars are gonna go and the other ones are gonna go up here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, remove these covers and then, um, you know, I guess I could have removed this before the exhaust too. If you have a complete exhaust in the car, removing this first might make it easier. But uh, to remove this, I also gotta remove this these covers on uh, each side, left and right. Just finished removing these little plastic covers on the left and right that cover this, uh, I guess they call it the W brace because it's kind of shaped like a W. Just finished unbolting the W brace, which uh, had no troubles with that. And now you can see what I mean, how you would have more room for uh, working on the exhaust if you remove the W brace first. Now the next thing I do before removing anything else, because a lot of the next stuff is uh, gonna be kind of supporting the subframe. I'm gonna put my jack under here, just under the diff, just to hold everything up and then start removing these uh, next bolts, which I guess after I do that, I could remove this brace right here. So I've got the rear subframe supported at the differential here. And then I also took the wheels off just cause I feel like, you know, having that added weight, this might be easier with them off. So I just zap those off real quick. So I'm gonna finish taking this bar off and then uh, we'll go towards the front and get things off there that we need to remove to lower the, the rest of it. So just finished removing the rear brace 
and you can see the subframe did drop down a little bit. And you can kind of see the rubber part in there. And then also underneath you can see kind of like this little gap here where we're going to install those pieces. Um, I guess these would be considered the front support bars. You just got one on each side. Uh, so next thing I'm going to do is remove these, which I guess the nut up here would be the one that's holding in the front of the subframe as well. And then I guess this goes without saying really, but you know, just uh, be careful. I mean, that's all we're removing. You obviously have some electrical connections, like the differential has the like wheel speed sensors here and uh, stuff like that in your brake line. So when we remove this, we're just gonna be careful that it doesn't drop down too much, too fast. So uh, we don't damage anything. But yeah, we're gonna get these off on both sides and then that should, uh, I guess I'll take a look at the instructions, but I think that should be everything to where we can lower it down enough to where we can get the uh, collars in. So we just removed the front subframe brace and the nut that actually uh, holds the subframe at the front here. Um, and yeah, this piece, you know, it's got some nuts and bolts. Two of the bolts go up here, two of the nuts hold onto this bracket that actually goes all the way over to the other side and attaches to the other brace on the right. The thing about these nuts that hold this that I wanna talk about is uh, you actually don't really have to worry about this falling because, yeah, so if you look up in here, there's actually like a little, almost like plastic zip tie type thing that's holding this up in place. There you can uh, see it there as well. It just like attaches to the top of the subframe. So I just checked with my flashlight and it does have the same zip tie type thing on this side. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty much the last piece. Just gonna remove this like we did on the other side. And then the we should be able to lower the subframe and get those collars in place. And then basically go in reverse and put everything back to the way it was. So on the passenger side here, I've put in uh, the rear and the front collar. I will say the one thing to watch out for is uh, the wiring right there. Just don't lower it too much that you'll mess up those wires. If you really want to, you, I guess you could disconnect that stuff. So it's not a concern. But um, in the front here, as you can see, there's a lot of room in the rear, but the front, not so much. And I would literally, I was holding onto this and kind of using my body weight to teeter it forward to lower the front in order to get the collar in there. So this one in the rear actually has to be oriented a certain way. So actually, this is actually how they're in the car is the way they're on the table here. This one, you can see there are these larger parts and the smaller parts. And that's just the way that the uh, bushing in the rear is um, the way that that one is made. So it actually has to go in this way to go in properly because there's just larger gaps that these can go down into. As you can see, the front one, it doesn't really matter which way it's oriented, but I just did it the same way as the rear one where the app uh, opening here is towards the inside of the car like that. So with this rear one, I mean, I guess that you could do it either way with the opening. I just put it towards the inside. I just figured that would be the better way to have it. And so this one, even though it doesn't matter which way it goes, I also put it in there like this. To be honest, uh, see this one's, I've been trying to press them down. It's been kind of difficult. I do have like silicone spray that I even used to try and make it easier. But even after I press it down all the way, it just kind of pushes itself back up. So just make sure that when you uh, have this in here and you twist it, you can feel when these little pieces kind of snap down into that opening where they want to rest. So if you are pressing yours down as well and it's not really staying, just make sure it's oriented correctly, press it down enough. So that way when we put the subframe back up, it does press down into the correct position. Because if it's not, then having this pressed down on the subframe bushing could actually cause the bushing to tear. So if you're having the same issue as me, obviously try to get this pressed down as much as possible in the correct position. But if not, just make sure it is in the right orientation so that when we put this back up, it doesn't damage the bushings in there. So I'm gonna go put these on the other side and then we'll do the lowers and start putting this thing back together. And then the front ones were these silver ones. I already pressed the one in over there. It's uh, pretty simple. This one just presses in around that rubber part. And then now for the, uh, the last ones, which are these uh, lower ones in the rear. I already uh, pressed that one up there into place. Yeah, as you can see, 
basically it's like it's they make this like it looks like it's meant to be in here these uh pieces just slide in these little gaps on either side here and then yeah as you all can see on the other side it just uh kind of just fits right in place so i'm gonna get that last one in and then the way we're gonna go back together is that uh the brace that goes in the rear here we're gonna put this up first not like torque it down but have everything all the bolts and everything threaded on enough because uh this actually the rear is sagging lower yeah we'll just get this put back up into place and then we'll start putting the front stuff back up into place just make sure we have everything threaded in before we start tightening stuff down all right so everything's pretty much back together and torqued down as well so yeah as i uh put the nuts for the main four main uh attachments for the rear subframe to the car. Um, I took my time really just threading. Uh, I guess I started with the rear, threading these on by hand, uh, worked this up a little bit, and then I threaded these on by hand and worked that up, that up a little bit. Kind of just kept going back and forth, so I was lifting the subframe up uh, evenly instead of going all the way with the front or back and having it kind of like at a somewhat extreme angle. So I basically just got those threaded in by hand until it was up high enough to where I could get the other stuff in by hand, like these, for example. Got these in by hand. Got uh, these two nuts in by hand that hold that bracket that go over to the other side. So I got everything in by hand. And then what I did was I, and uh, those four nuts for the subframe are 74 to 88 foot pounds. But to be honest, after I did that, I was like, all right, it just, I feel like I can snuck these down a little more, so I went to 100. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. I know that guys in the shop will just like use their impact and just impact these things on. So if you want to go a little, a little bit tighter than the spec, I don't think there's any harm in that. So after torquing all the subframe nuts down to 100 foot pounds, with this rear bracket, you just have these two left. The torque spec for these two bolts is 35 to 46 foot pounds. So after torquing these to 46, I came up here to these front brackets and torqued these bolts that go on the front of it. The tightening torque for these is 30 to 36 foot pounds. And then um, you have these nuts that hold on that this bracket that goes all the way over to that side too. And these are 37 to 44 foot pounds. And then I basically had everything in the back torqued to spec. And after I had all this stuff torqued i actually went back to the subframe nuts one more time and uh just made sure they're all they were all good at 100 again and then i lowered my jack off of the diff and actually went around one more time after that and just made sure they're all snug at 100 foot pounds one last time so after getting everything done with the subframe itself i put this w brace back up into place um, and when you're doing this, there's actually these little like tabs on the, um, the subframe brace. So when you're putting this up here, you can kind of like slide it into that tab to hold the rear of it for you while you put the front of it up and put these bolts into place. Kind of just helps you out, makes it a little easier. So, and then I torqued these four to spec, which is 35 to 46 foot pounds. And lastly, just torqued these smaller ones on each side, which the torque spec for these is 19 to 22 foot pounds. And really now all I have left is just those little plastic covers. Get this thing off of jack stands and then just test drive it, make sure there's no weird noises and see how much of a difference these things make. Yeah, as far as the exhaust, um, I guess I'll just leave that part off for now. I could always, uh, just put it back up there with the one nut holding it on till I uh, figure something out with that. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know where 
The uh, test drive feels good. Didn't drive it too hard, but there's no weird noises. Feels solid. I don't really know how much of a difference I can tell right now because to be honest, I don't daily drive this thing, so I'm not completely in tune with how it feels every day, but yeah, came back in, just looked underneath to see how everything looked and everything looks normal. There was no weird noises, but yeah, it does sound good without that uh, other little resonator muffler section. So yeah, I'll probably leave that off for now and then or some kind of exhaust, I don't know. Might make something custom. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hope this was helpful for anybody trying to do this and uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace.